Hey guys, it's Luke from Uploaded here. Welcome back to Spyro Year of the Dragon. In the last episode, we freed Bentley the Yeti from the evil sorceress's grasp here in Evening Lake. So, in this episode, we're going to go in to one of my most favourite levels ever. We're standing on the roof right here. You know what? Let's just hop right in. I am so excited for this level. Frozen Altars. Alright, so, first things first, when we were standing outside this portal last, it was before Christmas, and, you know, everyone was excited. Oh, hello, Gabriel. On behalf of the Ice Spirits, I want to grant you a special power for as long as we stay in our world. Alright, so. Gabriel granted us a special power. That power? Well, if we try and breathe fire, not fire, we now breathe ice instead. So this will only stay as long as you're in frozen altars. But the ice breath is something really, like, I like this level just because it's so different. Because you get ice breath instead of fire breath. And that actually makes things a lot different. And also, first thing I should mention, this world has some of the best music in any Spyro game. This music is so awesome. Um, right, but as I was saying, the last time we were standing outside that portal, it wasn't Christmas, it was before Christmas when I was recording. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys had a great Christmas. I know I did. I got some awesome games. Some we're going to talk to Alex a here. Defense system to protect us from Rhinox, but with these flippers, I can't even turn it on. You'd have no trouble using it, though. Just walk inside. When you're done, press the triangle button and you'll walk back out. I also love this. This is a reason why I love Frozen Altars as well. Because that guy is so suave. So, with the ice breath, we can just freeze things in place. If we want to kill them, then we can charge them afterwards. But I feel like the ice breath is really cool. For this feature um, it just makes killing enemies so cool now if we go over here he was saying that they'd set up a laser defense system so if we go inside we have a laser and with this we can control it and we can actually burn the enemies so really awesome feature um, there's more we can do with that later but for now okay well now there's more we can do with it because I'm an idiot and I missed it. I missed the whole point of it being there. So the whole point of it there is to burn ice walls down. Similar to like the cannons in Icy Peak. So now we can progress because we've burned the ice wall out. So this is one of the features I really love about this particular level. The coals we can charge. They don't do much. But if we charge those when the Rhinoc is there, well, I can kind of maybe show this as long as that stupid mammoth over there. Okay, he's throwing coals at us. Right, dog, don't. Okay, so we can destroy his coal pit. And now he will just show his ass at us. And we can freeze him in that position. So, yeah. And then we kill him. Alright, so, anyway, I got some awesome games for Christmas. I got, uh, I actually got Okami, which was a game that I had played, but not for long. Oh my gosh. That was, that was close. Alright. So, yeah, I got Okami. Um, I got Xenoblade Chronicles, which, again, a game I played for a while, but never, like, really, okay, well, never really gave much attention to. Both of those games, they're so awesome. Um, and I actually got Persona Q for 3DS, and if you haven't picked this up yet, I would recommend it. I was thinking about doing a review on it, but you know, I was late to it coming out, so I was late to the party, uh, so I decided in the end to just leave it and not do Persona Q review, but trust me, it's, it's a really good game. Um, I'd say it's probably 
one of the best 3DS games. So, I would definitely give it a look. If you are even somewhat interested in the Persona series, give it a look. It's it's different from the other Persona games, but it is really cool. Over here, we have one of the creepiest villains in Spyro history. We have the Snowman. What he will do is come up, grab you, shake you a bit, and then he will throw you. So he's just a guard, and you can't get past him in any way. He won't do damage, but there is literally no way past him. He will chase you down and get you, pick you up, shake you, and throw you. So how do we get past him? Eustace well, if we talk to Ernest here. Building competition when the sorcerers brought them to life with a spell. Since then, they've been stomping around, building ice walls, and generally causing trouble. Alright, so we find out that it's these snowmen that are actually the cause of all this trouble. Since the sorcerers um, used these snowmen to... They, she brought them to life. So if we can just... What we can do, just put a laser on him. He will run around in circles and shrink. And we can just destroy him. So it, it works pretty well. Uh, the laser system actually is really well controlled. I really do like it. Um... We can go into this ice cave here. This is actually scary. Yeah. And obviously we can't kill these guys unless we are... Okay, I can't believe that flame hit. But we can't kill those guys when we're on ice because we can't charge on ice. So that sucks. What do you have to say, Eustace? Alright, so this... This is another feature of Ice Breath that I should mention. He said it would be easy to get up to this treasure if we had something to stand on. Right, so how can we get up there? I mean, we've got nothing here we can't get up. There's a little slope here, but that, that doesn't allow us to actually get up. So what do we do? We freeze him, and now we can get up. So, really awesome feature there. and We, we get heavily rewarded for that, actually. Um, there's going to be more instances of this happening within the game. Just... Get out of here, dog. No one likes that guy. Uh, right. We're on green spot. We haven't seen many... Uh, we haven't actually seen many... What, well, butterflies? Whatever. You know, the little fodder. We haven't seen... Oh, come on. We haven't seen many of those. And... We... Oh. Well... I was going to say, we could really do with finding some of them. Uh, but that guy took care of it for us, took us a life, and... What the heck, man? Those guys have such a dodgy hitbox. Like, I breathed fire and... Oh, come on. That was too good. Alright, so we can burn the snowman. Down you go, snowman Joe. There we go. And we can burn that little mammoth. So the only ones that won't run around in circles when you try and burn them are the big guys with the clubs, actually. You can also use it to burn the... Unfortunately, the roof actually does protect it a little. But you can use this as well to burn other things. We can drag it along the wall and see what happens there. Um, but yeah, it's a really useful feature. I like it a lot. Uh, in any case, I believe we get a continue there. Um, right, now that mission there, that's something I want to tackle a little bit, a little bit later. I feel, I don't want to do it straight away. That, that is something really interesting. Um, because there is a skill point tied to it, and I don't know if we can reattempt the skill point once we've finished the level. Um, I really don't know. So, in fact, maybe it'd be best to just... Oh, hello. Damn it, I thought I could. I thought I could outpace him, but no. Um, so, oh, I don't know. Would it be easier to do it now? When we haven't got any eggs in this level? I mean... Can we... Can we... Do Alright, so we'll save it here, just in case, right? Um, and now I'm going to go do this level. So, 
This is the first level with Bentley the Yeti. We're going to go in. Ah, Spyro. I've just received word from my little brother. He appears to be having some trouble with the Yeti. Alright, so his little brother has a problem with the Yeti. That dumb Yeti took my ball. I told him to give it back or you kick his lousy butt. But he wouldn't listen. Bartholomew, you... you uh, you get us in so much trouble. In any case, right here we have the first instance of a boxing match. Um, this is primarily what Bentley's mini games are going to be like. They're going to be, well, different. And I like Bentley's mini games a lot. So we're going to go and fight the Yeti. Oh, you so, to show him not to mess with us, remember to block his high punches and hit him low when he tries to block. So, we've got to use the square button for a quick jab. Use the X button for a body blow. Use the circle button for the big hookaroo. And use the triangle button to block high. Bentley blocks low automatically. So, this is actually really tricky. Um, so, what I like to do... What I like to do here is... Hookaroo most of the time. Because Hookaroo does the most damage. So, I really like using Hookaroo. Alright, so just block. Hookaroo. Block. Hookaroo. And we take him out. First round goes to us. Alright. Alright. So, we get an egg for that. Apparently, it's not Bartholomew's ball. It was an egg instead. And we get Ali for that. Alright, so we've got to go back and kick his butt once again. This time, he will be... This will be a three-round match this time. Oh my god, just please be the last time I have to do this. I hate this game. It's not even getting easier. The difficulty thing that makes it easier the more you fail doesn't help. Yeah, the, the low ones never, never, ever connect. Oh my god, is this actually going to work? Okay, guys. This game, this mini game here, is so badly coded that the best way to win is to just spam the square button. If you can get him in the corner by spamming the square button, like you don't have to press X, X misses. Just, just spam square. Every other button is obsolete. Just, just keep spamming square, get him in the corner. And then just keep spamming square. You might trade some blows now and then. But you've won. Just spam square. GG. Really? You just spam square. And you win. This is ridiculous. In any case. After about 10 attempts. We get another egg, finally, and a skill point. <sighs> I was going to say that that mini game was harder. And that egg, is it me or did that egg take a long time to open? I don't know. In any case, that freaking, I was going to say, 
that that mini game was harder than the one in Spooky Swamp. But ten rounds in, I just decided, you know what? Well, let's try spamming one button. So there was, I was just spamming, I was just pressing square and moving forward over and over again. And every now and then he would trade punches with me. And as long as I got the timing just right, I basically out traded him with punches until I got him in the corner and I just beat him up. Every time I pressed X, it even when he was blocking high, it missed. And then he could counter me and do a lot of damage. So if you're struggling on that mini game just like me, just press square. It makes it so easy. Seriously, don't press anything apart from square. Square is the only button you need to beat that mini game. I wish I'd known that as a kid. In any case, finally progressing on with some actual Spyro gameplay now, rather than some really frustrating gameplay from Bentley. Ugh, that that really took it out of me. The amount of frustration that caused me was ridiculous. We're gonna kill all of these guys because they obviously they do drop. Um, obviously they drop gems, so we've got. I like that when you charge them, their tusks get stuck in the ground. That's pretty cool. Um, right. We can melt some stuff. What do we need to melt? Oh, this was actually we could melt them in the pit, right? Uh, that was nothing more. You really didn't need that at all. All right, so we go in here. Uh, Moneybags is here. So, as per Moneybags is here, being a jerk, we can't freeze Moneybags, unfortunately. In any case, let's just end this level off here. Thanks. For well, officially. Back, Why don't you take this? The Rhinox were trying to fry it with a laser, but you stopped them just in time. All right, so we stopped them just in time, and we get Janna. Okay. And the door opens, and where does that come out, you might ask? Right at the start of the level. Yep. Okay, so now Moneybax. We're going to talk to him. Say, Spyro, you're a sports fan, aren't you? As you probably know, Frozen Altars is the birthplace of the great sport of cat hockey. Today's match is sold out, of course, but I just happen to have a spare ticket that I'll sell you for, say... A teensy weensy markup. Uh, okay. So Moneybags is um Moneybags is one of those guys that stands outside of a stadium after buying a ticket, and tries to sell it for a marked up price. What an asshole. But sure, I love cat hockey. I don't know what it is, but I love it. In fact, I've even placed a little wager on the Rhinox team. Let's just hope the local team doesn't have any last-minute accidents. Um, hope the local team doesn't have any last-minute accidents. Moneybags, you're an idiot, because now I'm deliberately going to make it so that the Rhinox lose. So we're going here. I challenged a Rhinox to a traditional game of cat hockey, but I think I sprained my flipper during training. Would you mind taking my place? Yeah, sure, Great. we'll play cat hockey. Freeze the cats and push them into my goal to score. So Moneybags actually placed a wager on the Rhinox team, and then he himself either hired someone or did it himself, injured poor Errol here. So that he couldn't play. Alright, so what we have to do on this is it's hockey, so we have to push five cats into the enemy goal. So the cats are actually all out at once. So what we can do is we can freeze them and we can slide them around. So there we go, we get one. Um, we can freeze him as well, which is really useful. So I recommend freezing him. Because it help, it makes it so much easier. Because when he's frozen, he really can't do much. Alright, so come on. Freeze the cats. Come on, we can get it in. We got two. 
No. Okay, the ice physics in this game, by the way, are some some scary. He's scoring his own goals. What what is he doing? What is he doing? Oh wait, wait, wait! I'm scoring in the other way. Why did I start over there then? All right. Well, that made no sense. That made no sense at all. I start. Look at this. I start over here, but I've got this is where I've got to score in here. Seriously, that makes no sense. All right, dog, cat, get in there. There's one point for me. There's two points for me. I'm gonna let him have one. I probably shouldn't have let him have one. Dog. Get out of here. Right, so we can actually freeze this guy. Stop him from doing anything. And now all the cats are in my court. <laughs> There's three. Come on. There's four. One more. Freeze him. Let's freeze him. Down you go, sir. Alright, so yeah. It's a bit of a weird minigame, but I like it. You know, aside from the obvious why the hell do I start on my own, like, the, the goal I've got to score in. That makes no sense, game. Well, I get to keep the Champions Cup, which is just an egg known as Bar. This is probably one of my favourite dragon eggs. Seriously, nothing... That is the most unique dragon egg in the entire game. It's so awesome. It's called Bar. You think... Wait, it's a sheep egg? And then no, it's just a dragon in a costume. It's so awesome. Um, this guy's going to continue playing by himself. Because he's sad. And he's upset that he lost. Although he does seem quite happy. The cats basically just sit here and scratch him post which you get. Oh my god. Spyro, what were you do what are you doing, Spyro? What the heck? He's like, oh Alright, never mind. Uh, uh, Spyro's enjoying that a little too much. If you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. Let's get out of here. We've had our fun. Let's freeze this guy one more time. Come on, dude. <laughs> Alright. Off we go. Unfortunately for you, moneybags, the cat team won. Well, he's gone. He ran off. He was too sad. He ran off. Um, right. Now that we've reached the end of the level, what we can do... You've seen a little bit of this earlier when I was up here. You go around here, and if you go up here, you can actually access the rooftops of Frozen Altars. Now, this is a feature I really, really like. Um, not many levels actually do this, where they have a vertical aspect to them as well. Especially, like, in this game. And I really like it. Um, you can go on, you can pretty much go everywhere um, from these rooftops. So if we just keep going along here, which is, by the way, one of the thinnest bridges I've ever seen, we can get an egg, and we get Jasper. Alright. So, with Jasper in hand, you'll notice there are still some gems that we need to collect. Um, I don't believe that we can go along here. Actually, can't. Yeah, we can't. So, I'm an idiot, and I need to get back up there now. Luckily, it's not too far, but, you know, that was still stupid. So, I guess we have to glide over there. Um, that's my guess, anyway. I don't know if there's even anything over there, but we can try. This is the fun of Spyro when you haven't played it in some time. You never know if there's actually anything over there. If there's any, is, there, is it worth going over somewhere? Or whether you're just going to be wasting your time. And I actually kind of like that because it allows you to explore. So we're going to actually, we're going to try it. 
You know what, there is something over there. I don't know how we get over there. But it's certainly not like by gliding there. So I think I kind of know, actually. So what we have to do, potentially, maybe, like I say, I haven't played this in a while. Um, but this is one of my favourite levels. I hope you can see why. I mean, the music is really awesome. First things first. Um, not only that, it's got some interesting mini games. You know, the boxing one is annoying, but... Oh, come on. Come on. Really? Okay, whatever. The boxing one is a really, really annoying, and we're never going to go back there again. Um, but especially considering it has a skill point attached to it that makes it even harder. But, yeah. Um, if we go... I just want to make sure, because like, obviously we need to get every gem. And obviously there's still one egg for us to collect. I really don't... By the way, I think hovering in Spyro is awkward and I tend to try and not hover when I can because I just don't like it. I think it's tricky to pull off. Alright, I'm going to go down here. So this is a lot easier to make it to. There's some gems along here. Okay. So, how do I get up there? Can I fly up there? I really doubt I can. Yeah, I can't. There is a way up there because there's gems up there. So we know that much. All right, is all right. Okay, no, I think I know. Okay, so we go up here. We go up here, and then can we? I don't know. It looks a bit far. You know what? Though I think I know how to get up there. We need to go here. Yeah, okay, I think I got it. I think. Alright, so there's an egg over there you can see. We're going to freeze this guy though. And with that we can get up here. Get a couple of gems. Um, go up here. Go up these stairs. And there's actually a gem container up here with a 25 gem inside. So a lot of the gems do come from the rooftops on this level. Not many gems come from the mini games. In fact, no gems come from the mini games. So that's interesting to say the least. So yep, yeah, okay, I'm a genius, right? You gotta slide on along that and then just glide over. Um, not too tricky, right? What we need to do next, because that that was actually required, believe it or not, for this egg. Oh god. Or was it? Yeah, it was. So you have to fly over there onto this. Right? Fly. Okay, so I don't think it's actually required. Oh, come on. I don't think it's required to go up there, but I think it's useful. Um, well, I mean, the gems are up there anyway, so yeah. In fact, is it required? I think it might be. Yeah, it's totally required. Okay. That's fine then. Um, this is probably one of the hardest things though. This whole platforming bit here. I'm surprised I made it last time. Okay, getting over here. No, don't slide off the roof. Oh, come on! I always... See, this is why I really don't like the hover mechanic. Just because I always hover too soon. And I'm not good at hovering in this game. What the hell? You stay frozen, man. Alright. So this level has been long. Most of it has been the boxing, which took way, way, way too long. I'm not going to beat it around the bush. Boxing took too long. We did it in the end. Just like, you know, I'm going to do everything in the end, obviously, but... This is taking too long as well. Like, it's taking me way too long to get over to this jump. There we go. Oh my gosh, that took so long. Alright, so we get up here, and we can finally get that Tem gem that was... No! Oh my god, are you serious? At least I didn't die. We got 600 out of 600 gems, though. 
So we got all the gems. As you'll notice, the, the total of gems in the level now has gone up. So, something to, to note. Uh, right. So with all the gems in hand, there's only that egg over there that we need to get. So if I can just... Yes, okay. We got it. The final egg of the level, Cecil. We could have done this a lot earlier, but I generally just prefer to do this last uh, class as part of the rooftop area. In any case, that's 6 out of 6, 1 skill point, and 600 out of 600 gems. Frozen Altars, one of my favourite levels, is complete. Um, not much more to say about that. We are going to exit the area now. It really is one of my favourite areas. Um, I mean... The fact that you get you get the ice breath, um, which is a really unique mechanic. The music is great. There's a bit of comedy in here. The mini games, okay, one of them's all right, but you know they need to make it clearer. But it's not too tricky. One of them isn't. The other one is just frustrating beyond all means. Um, but yeah, I think. It has its problems, but it is one of my favourite levels. And, you know, I just feel like the atmosphere in Frozen Altars is really nice. So, I hope you guys thought it looked nice as well. If you played it, I hope you enjoyed it as well. In any case, if we go and look at the Atlas as that frog is in midair, we will go down. No, what are you doing? Go down to Evening Lake Worlds, and we'll see Frozen Altars complete. Next on the list is Lost Fleet, which is where we'll be heading in the next episode. So, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.